This video is a response to the video Intelligent Design and Plasticine Part 5 A Math Problem for Darwin by Venom Fang X. There are a number of other refutations to this video that I have seen, but none contain what I see to be the primary flaw in Venom Fang X's argument. I actually found Venom Fang X's video interesting because it provided a bit of a conundrum for me. While I immediately saw a number of smaller faults with the video, and could confidently assert, based on what I knew about the way evolution works, that his conclusions were wrong, I still could not see the flaw in the overall logic. It took me about a minute, but I worked it out. Take a look at the video yourself to see if you're smarter than me. For those of you who don't have that much time on your hands, here is a quick summary of the argument provided by Venom Fang X. The human body is very complex, with a numerical figure given of 1 to 10 trillion. There would therefore have to be 1 to 10 trillion changes from the time of our last single cell ancestor, about 2 billion years ago, to us today. This would mean a rate of change of 20 to 2,000 changes a year. If we do not see this rate of change in nature, then we must conclude that evolution is wrong. As we do not see 20 to 2,000 physical changes a year, evolution can't be right. Evolutionists say that evolution takes millions and billions of years. Even if one change took one million years, then evolution would need a million ten trillion years to produce something as complex as a man. Venom Fang X specifies that he wants to see physical changes at a rate of 20 to 2,000 a year, as his measurement is based on physical rather than genetic complexity. These physical changes must be new and not alterations of existing features. A bigger beak on a finch is an example of an alteration rather than a physical change. New limbs or organs would be examples of additional traits. We do not see such changes emerging at all. Furthermore, as most changes are detrimental, the number of changes seen per year would have to be increased. There are a number of minor problems here that I will quickly point out. Firstly, the maths for working out the changes per year is wrong. Instead of dividing the number of changes by the number of years, Venom Fang X did it the other way around. He then miscalculated when using these numbers by a factor of about 100,000. In the end, however, this is largely moot, because his result is in the right ballpark, as the answer he should have had is 500 to 5,000 changes a year. Secondly, his assumption that the number of changes per year would be linear is flawed. A single cell that mutates will gather new features relatively slowly, but that cell becoming fused to a second cell is a major change. For a human, on the other hand, thousands of new nerve endings would go by unnoticed. The upshot of all this is that we can't look at a single cell organism for change, but the complex organisms will be mutating at a greater rate than 500 to 5,000 changes a year. A third problem is that Venom Fang X used the average human lifespan as a measure of how many changes would have to take place each generation. What he should have used was the average age of a child's parents at birth. Let's give that a value of 30, partly because I can't be bothered multiplying by 25. All that aside, let's look at the argument as it stands. We should see 500 to 5,000 physical changes a year, which translates to between 15,000 and 150,000 changes per generation. Now, I grant all of this is pretty unscientific, but the numbers should at least give us some sort of idea as to what to expect. So, why don't they? The answer is that in Venom Fang X's argument, he has shifted the goalposts massively. The number 10 trillion is close to the number of cells in a human body, which is 50 to 100 trillion. When obtaining his number, Venom Fang X quoted things like 100 billion neurons in the brain or 500 million nerves, yet what he demands to see are large things like limbs and internal organs. Let's look at this two ways. Firstly, if somebody's child has 15,000 more nerves than their father, is anyone going to notice against the 500 million that are already there? What about 150,000 more neurons compared to 100 billion? Because each part Venom Fang X is talking about is so small, hundreds of thousands of new parts can slip in unnoticed. Another way to look at it is, how often should we see limbs appear? Let's assign the human body a limb complexity value of 4. 
It's about 2 billion years since our last ancestors were single cell life forms, so we need a rate of at least one limb every 500 million years. Well, there's no problem for evolution there. Organs would need to appear every 100 million years or so, a new bone every 8 million years or so. As it turns out, we see people with new features such as these cropping up every now and again, but these changes are so rarely beneficial that it can take millions of years for one of these changes to stick. In summary, there are many structural changes that occur from generation to generation, such as changing neural pathways, uh, arrangement of facial hair and other small things. If you wish to give a number of over a trillion to human complexity, all of these things have to count. If, however, you wish to see big structural changes, the number you adopt needs to be much smaller, and the change can indeed take millions of years.